Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for September 13th, 2017. Before I get started, just want to say happy birthday to my mom. Today's her birthday, so happy birthday, mom. There you go. You're famous. All right, or at least a little bit. But yep, happy birthday to mom. Let's talk about the tropics. It has been a busy year, as advertised, and... The impacts have been significant, to say the least, and we still have a long way to go. We have this developing La Nina. What a surprise that is. Remember, we were worried about their, and I say worried in terms of how it might impact things and throwing monkey wrenches into things, worried about an El Nino developing. And not only did that not happen, but now we have this La Nina coming on, what a major surprise that was. And in the meantime, the Atlantic Basin here, the main development region through the Caribbean, much above normal for the most part in some areas. But you see there's no blue in anywhere in the deep tropics down here except what I just drew. And the Gulf has cooled off significantly. Wonder why. And uh, we're going to see a little bit of a change through here in the coming days, I bet, uh, from Irma. And then the subtropical Atlantic up here, a little bit warmer than it should be as well. And we have a long way to go. And that's simply wanting to keep people prepared and thinking about what they're going to do if a hurricane comes their way. We really need to start talking about impact more and understanding probability. Uh, Not in today's video, but um, the education side of this, especially using social media, we can do a lot more. The upper ocean heat content, Irma took some out right there. Look at that, left a hole in the uh, upper ocean heat content pattern and probably chiseled away a little bit of it through here as well. And uh, not much of a dent through this area, interestingly enough. And then certainly you can see the difference right over here. There's just this marked change uh, where it's just gone. Um, the, The water's still warm there, but it's churned up. It's got sediment all stirred up. But off the east coast here, the southeast coast, still unscathed by any hurricanes this year. And we'll have to see if that's going to change. That's the subject pretty much of the rest of the discussion. So the only thing to talk about in the Atlantic Basin is Hurricane Jose. And as of the 5 a.m. advisory package, winds are 75 miles per hour, pressure 985, and it's moving southeast at about 8 miles per hour. If we look at the forecast track, over the next several days, this uh, looks like it's supposed to weaken. I just, I don't, I think it's going to come back. I mean, we know how intense it is, and the global models are all indicating that. And so I think this will come back. And I also don't think that it is necessarily going to just turn out to sea, and then that's it. It's gone. And I'm going to show you the reasons why I believe we're going to start seeing this gradually come around to the left side of the guidance envelope. And we're going to have something milling around out here, as they say, uh, coming up. So looking at the satellite animation, you can see it's still being impacted by shear, but the convection is trying to hold on strong. Uh, The water temperatures in here are very warm. It just has this northerly shear coming around the top of everything, and that's pushing those thunderstorms away. Otherwise, it has decent outflow. On the southern side, it is just restricted and kind of chopped off here on the northern side, as you can see. And there's probably even some dry air getting pushed in. When you have shear pushing at a storm or a hurricane, you can also inject some dry air that way. And it's battling that, and it may even weaken to a tropical storm. <clears throat> then I think, like I said, it's going to come back. So if we look at the 6Z spaghetti plots, as they're called, uh, you notice a few things here that you know it's not completely curved where they're all out to see like this. The guidance envelope, I talked about that a lot with Irma. In this case, the guidance envelope is fairly divergent. Again, don't worry about this. This is the climatology and persistence. It is a statistical model, and it does not even factor in right now. So the rest of these, this is the Canadian, um, and you can see like the GFS or the ensemble mean right there, or the average. There's your one of your consensus models. And this is the UK Met interpolated, etc. Uh, and there's a pretty big spread here, even you know if you just look at the Canadian versus the UK Met. Now at least the UK Met has stopped with coming over here to Florida. That's good. 
we're narrowing the gap a little bit. But what they're doing is they're starting to do some weird things here because they're trying to figure out what's happening over the northwest Atlantic as the ridges collapse and then build back. We're in this sort of transient period. And I'm going to show you that here on the latest global model runs here. We're going to compare the GFS and the Euro from uh, tropicaltidbits.com. That's where I grabbed these images. And so let's take a look. So I'm going to do something different today, too. We're going to look at the next five days, and then we're going to play sort of keys to the future, uh, if you will, and look at days six and seven and see what those look like. And I think within context and explaining it, and what to look for makes it more reasonable to show days six and seven with the caveat that those are so far out in time that those are subject to huge errors but they give us a glimpse of the future farther down the road okay so uh, we'll get to that so let me just move on through here this is the initial condition from the zero z run last night you see this very large hole in the atmosphere so to speak very low heights because of Irma and the trough and everything that it got all involved with, just a huge area of lower heights in the atmosphere. And then there is Jose. And if we compare the GFS and the European, they're both almost identical. So we can just kill the initial maps. They're gone. All right, now we're at 24 hours out on the GFS. And you see Jose down here. So not much change at all. It's just kind of moving to the southeast. And that's generally the same here on the European, although... The euro is a little bit more to the southeast. All right, so you know what? Did I? I guess I messed these up. That's my fault. Let's see if I get these right. 24. This is 48. 48. So let's just go here. Let's go to 48 hours because Mark somehow got the tabs out of alignment, and that's okay. You can give me a little bit of credit for having most everything in alignment. So at 48 hours, the GFS right down here with Jose. And it strengthens it. It's like 980, and it's nice and uh, packed isobars. you got this little shortwave trough up here. Uh, nothing real deep. And, and that's what I want you to notice. We're not seeing you know, this trough right here uh, digging down like that. You know, no giant lon longitudinal troughs coming in that would just come in and sweep this out to sea. All right, so that's 48 hours on the GFS. There's 48 hours on the Euro. So a little bit of spatial difference in terms of where they are on the map but that's about it so we'll kill these two and then we go to uh, hour number 72 GFS hour number 72 on the euro all right so you know similar but again every mile might count at some point and notice we've lost the trough overall there's sort of these building heights now uh, back over the Great Lakes and beyond to the northwest and there's no short wave digging in out here. So now it's just a matter of where does the ridging set up over the western Atlantic over here. Does it build back in and sort of shove Jose more to the west with time? Well, let's just keep moving and I'll show you. All right, so that was 72. Now we go to 96 hours on the GFS, 96 hours on the Euro. Now now we have a pretty big spread. So GFS at 96, Euro at 96. You know, interesting that they're that far apart at that point in time, but they both show, you know, a decent sized, well, not necessarily, it's more like intensity, storm or hurricane, and you notice too down here off the Baja, there's one developing, so we'll keep an eye on that for our friends down in Mexico, and that's a pretty intense one as well. The Euro uh, also shows that. Well, no, it doesn't. It's a little farther to the southwest. Sorry about that. Um, I have not paid attention to the Eastern Pacific, but we certainly will in the coming days since we know something's trying to develop. So that's 96 hours out. Now let's go to 120. And there's the GFS versus the, i got to fix my Firefox so that it is more stable here. So there's the uh, Euro at 120. That's quite a difference there, wouldn't you say? So the Euro is kind of, there's enough of a weakness right out here that the Euro is trying to hand this off into that weakness and just send it out to sea. Uh, whereas the GFS isn't quite as uh, enthusiastic about that, let's say. And you notice, too, that there's huge differences in what's happening in the Pacific between the Euro and the GFS. And so we're now out here at, days, uh, at day five. So I'm going to kill these two. And now we're going to do this sort of what if. So this is day six. And this is what we need to look for. 
All right? So here we are, 144 hours out, and the GFS has Jose as a pretty powerful hurricane just to the southeast of Cape Hatteras. You notice some things that are very important here. First, we don't have much energy at all digging in over the Great Lakes, off the northeast coast, the northwest Atlantic. No troughing to speak of. You do have some heights building back here uh, to the west, and so this is kind of like a block. It's just not going to be able to go that way, due west. Uh, and then you need to have a little bit of a height build out here to the east and the northeast of Jose. But the biggest thing is we don't have any big troughs dip, dipping down like this. Um, our heights in the atmosphere, uh, at least to the north of Jose, for a limited area, are eh, somewhat zonal, meaning that they're all going in the same direction here. You know, we do have some amplification back to the west, but over here, for this little amount of distance at least, up into Canada, some zonal flow overall and no troughing. All right, so that's the GFS. What does the Euro show at day six? Um, well, it's not gone yet. And you see that heights are building just a little bit right there over to the north, almost due north of Jose. Uh, a little bit of energy trying to dig in this way, but Jose is way out here. So that's day six. Now if you look at day seven on the GFS, so there's day six on the GFS, there's day seven. All right, you see? And then if we look at day seven on the Euro, all right, there's day six on the Euro, there's day seven on the Euro, what happened? The Euro, day six, the Euro, day seven, it's moving back. So what does this tell us? It does not tell us, and let me make this extremely clear, it does not tell us that Jose is going to come up, go out, and come back. That is not what it is saying, or showing us. It's not saying anything, but depicting what it is telling us is this is not a clear-cut case yet that Jose will come in and turn between Hatteras and Bermuda and head out into the North Atlantic on its merry way. It tells us that we need to watch much closer than maybe we were yesterday or the day before. We have a deep trough digging in out here over the west, and usually that signifies amplification it's just like when you whip a rope, you know, and you uh, take a, a jump rope and you kind of put waves through it and you whip it. If you saw that in slow motion, you would see the troughs and ridges move their way down the rope. It's kind of like that. And the atmosphere is going to have these waves in the atmosphere, and there's just not much deep troughing at all over the northwest Atlantic and the northeast part of North America at days 6 and 7. So... When we get to that point in time, a couple of days out, those will be within the five-day time frame. I suspect that the forecast for Jose will have it closer to the United States somewhere in here, maybe a bit more west, and therefore we definitely need to be watching it. And another reason behind that, water temperatures up here, uh, right off the northeast coast of mid-Atlantic here, colder than they should be. But the Gulf Stream is fairly evident right through here, and the waters of the subtropical Atlantic here surrounding Bermuda all the way up almost to the northeast coast. Again, it's, let's just zoom in and I can show you. It's a little bit colder than it should be up there, but that's some pretty warm water for this time of year. It's above normal, and usually that helps to inflate that balloon of high pressure just a little bit more. So the keys to the game, so to speak, will be how much ridging and you can see there's not that much difference between the GFS and the Euro in the overall pattern at day seven. It's just a difference of where Jose is, right? So you see that there's a deep trough in the GFS, there's a deep trough in the Euro just off the west coast. Whoops. And so we'll see how that affects things downstream. Bottom line, Jose is definitely worth watching. And I think that it'll remain a hurricane or become a hurricane again if it weakens. And it's not over. And then to add to all of that, uh, I saw from a few tweets last night in the longer range, 8 to 14 days, and this is much more in what we call the outlook part of this video, in the 8 to 14 day time frame, and this is a much larger scale thing that we're looking at, 
the models are indicating a lowering of pressures and fairly significantly what we call in statistics several standard deviations below normal in other words not just a little bit below normal but noticeably below normal pressures down in the Caribbean and in the southwest Atlantic overall but especially the Caribbean and I'm going to show you that when I do another update later this afternoon that would mean more opportunity for convergence and the piling up of air and for the genesis of something farther to the west and that's what the season normally does as we progress you start losing the development out in the eastern Atlantic and it starts shifting back west towards the southwest Atlantic, the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico so we have a long way to go and people need to stay vigilant they need to stay prepared and be ready because we have probably several more named storms, several more hurricanes, and maybe one or two more major hurricanes to go. And that's just the reality of it. So we now have the app on both Apple and Android products, uh, the iPhone particularly. It does not work very well on an iPad, and it was not developed for iPad. So be warned, if you buy it on an iPad, it's not meant to be on iPad. Maybe we can get to do an iPad version someday, but that's several thousand dollars of development, and I'd rather invest that money in additional equipment. But it is available, Hurricane Impact, on the App Store, and finally on Google Play um, through Android devices. I want to thank Blue Tone Media here in Wilmington, the developer. I am the producer and the director of the movie, so to speak, the app, and they put it together. They are the people the special effects artists, you know, the camera people, you get the analogy. I produce it, they make it happen. And so thanks to them and their hard work, the Google Play version, the uh, Android version, I saw it. I don't have an Android phone. I'm not like an Apple nut, you know, I just love my iPhone. But I'm not some crazy, I, I don't want to even get, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just like my iPhone. That's all there is to it. So I don't even have an Android device and uh, a guy in Orlando showed me, uh, Mike Cornelius, one of our subscribers and supporters, showed me it on his uh, S8. And holy cow, it's like 97% matched. I mean, I couldn't ask for, you know, you want to go for 100, right? And there's a couple of bugs that we can tweak, but other than that, oh my goodness. So really, thank you to Blue Tone Media for putting that together. So get it in the App Store or on Google Play and everything Hurricane Track goes into that app, aggregated into one nice package, and then the landfall coverage is unlike anything that anybody else offers. So I just want to make that note. I'll be talking about the app more and more because I want you to be sort of conditioned to check the app throughout the day. The web is great, the YouTube is great, but everything goes right into the app. It's one nice package. All right, I'll shut up about it. All right, I'm going to do another video update later today. And then this evening, I'm going to put out a special video talking about our future, how we do what we do, the funding behind it, and what I have for ideas going forward. You don't want to miss that video. Uh, I'm going to produce that later this evening or tonight, and uh, it's going to be even a little different. You'll see. So a lot of exciting things today. It's good to be back in the office with all my tools and the computers and everything. So here we go. All right, that's it from me for now. Again, I'll have another video discussion this afternoon, sometime between 3 and 4 p.m. Eastern, and then another video tonight, like I said, uh, probably around 10 o'clock I'll post that. I'm Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you again later this afternoon.